Hello guys, and welcome to the third part of making a Nagar.io game in Python. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2 already, watch those first and then come back to this video. So let's get started. I'm going to start by defining the wanderer method inside our cell class. What it's going to do is it's going to randomly decide in which direction our bot's going to move in. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called randomize. It's going to be a random number from 1 to the radius of our bot. If randomize is equal to 1, we are going to randomly set the status again. The direction our robot is going to move in is dependent on the status. So I'm going to paste some code in here that's going to do that. You might want to take some time to copy that down. If it's 1, it's going to go north. If it's 2, it's going to go northeast. If it's 3, it's going to go east. If it's 4, it's going to go southeast. And so on and so forth. Next, I want to draw the bot to the screen. So to do that, I'm going to go under where we drew all our cells and create another for loop. For bot and bots, I am going to wander the bot and then draw it. To draw it, I can just paste this line and replace cells with bots. Now if we run it, we should get bots on the screen. But I can't eat them yet, nor can they eat me. And they can't eat the cells either. So let's fix that. But first, I want to be able to see how big the bots are. Next, I'm actually going to make the bots. So to do that, I'm going to go right under where we made all our cells. And I'm going to create a new for loop. So for i in range bot count, new bot is equal to cell random dot randomt. That's our x position, and this is going to be our y position. And then we need our color. So a random color from 0 to 255. And I need to copy paste that three times for its RGB. Then we need our size. So it's going to be random between the minimum size we said our bots can be and the maximum size we said our bots can be. And then obviously we have to name it bot. Then we append that to our list. So bots.append new bot. To do that, I just have to make a little addition to the draw function. So we will go up here and we have to actually blip this to the screen. So I've made it render the text, but I haven't put it on the screen yet. So I will do that by putting text. Then the values I got for putting it on the screen were x minus 17.5 and y minus 12.5. If I run that, I should be able to see the bot's masses. And yeah, it works. 2.995 works perfectly. I can also see my own mass on here. Next, I'm going to check for collisions between bots and layers. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and make a new for loop for bot and bots. Then I'm going to copy this line and paste it there. Then I'm going to replace every instance of cell with bot. I also want the player to be a little bigger than the bot for it to eat it. So I'm going to multiply the bot's radius by 1.1. So in other words, the player has to be 1.1 times bigger than the bot for it to be able to eat it. Under there, I am going to actually do the math for eating the bot. So firstly, I have to add the area of the bot to the area of the player. So to do that, I am going to calculate the bot's area first. So the bot area is equal to math.py times the bot's radius squared. And the player's area 
is equal to math.py times the player's radius squared. The new area is the bot's area plus the player's area. And the new radius should be math.square root new area divided by math.py. And then we will change the radius of the player to the new radius minus the player's radius. And then we can remove the bot. If we want to respawn bots, we are going to copy this and put that there. And that should handle player eating bots. What if the bot happens to eat the player? To handle that, we will copy this and put that down there. We also have to change the inequality at the end and reverse it. And then we move the 1.1 to the player side. So if the bot is 1.1 times bigger than the player, then the bot can eat the player. So moving back here, we have to add the area to the bot instead of the player now. The bot's radius plus equals the new radius minus the bot's radius. We don't have to remove the bot because the bot's not being eaten. Instead, we will set game over to true. What if the bot is eating another bot? In that case, let's add an else to the end of our if statements. And inside, we're going to have two for loops for collide bot and bots. And for cell and cells. This will handle bots eating other bots, and this will handle bots eating cells. Let's start with bots eating bots. First, we will copy this and paste this into here. Then we fix our indentation. There. Now, we want to replace every instance of player with collide bot. So, I'm going to replace that there. There there, and there. I'm also going to move this in there because we want the bot that's eating to be bigger than the bot that it's going to collide with. So inside there, once again, we're going to replace player with collide bot. Then we replace player with bot. And then we remove collide bot. Also, syntax error, change that bot to bots. Now, then we respawn the bots. Before we test this, delete all of that and delete all of that. We want to move the bots that are moved to the top so it doesn't run multiple times and then you have to change this to a greater than or equal to sign so after that we should be good in testing it so if we run that if we go find a bot that's trying to eat each other so oh that works so, you see how the size is 308? The max size that a bot can spawn at is 250. So, it must have eaten something. Now, let's work on bots eating cells. This is fairly simple since we already did that up here. So, all we need to do is copy that, paste it down here, replace player with bot here, here here and there and once again remove this part and replace that 
and we should be good. Let's test that. So, as you can see, the bot is eating the cells, and its mass is increasing. So that works. The last thing I'm going to cover is border collisions, because we don't want the bot to run off the map. To fix that, we will go down here and set the limits for where the player and the bot can go. So, let's find where we drew the player. It's up here. And let's start with if player cell dot x position greater than or equal to the map size plus half the width of our screen, then we will track 5 from the player's x position, so it'll push it back. Elif, it is going off the left side of the screen. We are going to Add 5 to the X position. If everything is normal, we're just going to continue and checking the mass positions and adding them. Same thing for the Y. So we can just copy that, paste it there, take that, put it there, and we replace all the X's with Y's. and we replace the width with height. And that should stop our player from moving off the screen. So if I go and find a border, it does not let us go off the screen. It pushes us back. Now let's do the same for the bots. So for the bots, we go down here to where we draw the bots, and if bot dot x position is greater than or equal to the map size, then we subtract five from the x position, and if the bot's x position is less than or equal to negative map size, then we add 5 to the bot's x position. And we do the same thing with the y. If bot.y position is greater than or equal to the map size, we can counter that by subtracting fry from the y position. And lastly, if bot that position is less than or equal to the map size. We will counter that by adding 5 to the y position. And at the end, we can have the wander. So, if I add a colon there, fix my spelling there, and add a negative sign there, I should have a fully functioning Agarda AO game. If you want more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. For now, that's all.